Hello, welcome back to Football United TV. I'm joined by two special guests today. One from Ireland, Dublin. That's David. How you doing, mate? How you doing? Are you from Dublin? Yeah, from Dublin, yeah. Yeah, good. I just wanted to make sure because you didn't actually tell me that, did you? <laughs> yeah, no, I actually forgot to mention there I was from. Yeah, Dubliner, yeah. <laughs> and we're also joined by football man Sam. How you doing, mate? Hey, buddy, how you doing? Not too bad, mate. How are you? Yeah, not too bad, mate. And you're from Somerset, right? Is that correct? I am indeed, buddy. I am indeed. Brilliant. But you did live up north, is that correct as well? I live up north currently now. Oh, cool. Right. Well, we're going to go on to that, aren't we, and talk about yeah, man. who you Yeah, man. But we wanted to talk pretty much about what happened last night uh, with the Spurs and Everton game and the, the fight in between Hugo Lloris and Son and Mourinho oh. coming out um, this morning, David. You were talking about him saying about the um, situation was a beautiful one. I'm not really too sure about that. Yeah, what, starting with you, David, what do you think about that? Yeah, so it was a bit crazy. Obviously, I listened to uh, Larissa's um, post-game interview and he was saying, you know, it happens when two players have a lot of passion, they're playing in the game and then they feel like, you know, they, that they're getting really angry because one thing goes wrong in the game and then Jose came out this morning and said it himself. He said, oh, it was beautiful. It's nice to see the players showing that kind of passion. And for me, I don't really understand it. You know, like, I play Sunday league football myself. And if I see two lads fighting on the pitch on the same team, I'm, I'm kind of looking at them going, what are you doing? Yeah. But uh, for Jose, obviously, he thought it was uh, top notch for him. So I, I, I don't understand it personally, but I, I, I can understand, yeah, the passion, but don't let it affect your teammates. You stand together as a unit, in my eyes. I, I like to call him, um, people call him Trophy Mourinho at um, Spurs. I like to call him Croquet Mourinho, the, the star of football. <laughs> he plays. It's so boring. It is. It was a very, very boring game. What do you make of the game, Sam, yourself? Oh, well, oh, well, like you said, I think the most entertaining thing that happened in the game w was the incident. Um, it, it was a very dull game. Um, I totally agree with David. Um, I, if I was on the pitch, I'd be ashamed. And what you've got to think as well, an incident like that in front of the opposite team will give them a psychological effect thinking, OK, we've, we've got them a little bit rattled here. Um, I think that should have happened behind closed doors, maybe in the change rooms. And again, with what um, Mourinho said, saying it's beautiful, I don't, I don't think he should have said that in public. I think... If he wanted to address it, he should have addressed it in the, in the changing rooms. I don't think that should be seen on the TV and in front of the opposite team. Do you think it's also, you know, that, that the way he's treated Ndombele, you know, like, you know, through the media? I don't understand that. I, I really don't. Um, okay, there, there's a few games where he's been really poor. Um, one springs to mind was away at Burnley, um, where they did analysing on him, and he just did no movement whatsoever. But he, he's new to the Premier League, so he's going to take a bit of time to adjust. Um, I do see talent in him. I really do. And to not be getting any game time, I, I think is crazy. Yeah, no, I agree with you, Sam. There. I, I, I think I call it the Mourinho factor. Like, you look what he done at Manchester United, Real Madrid. He drives players out. I don't he just, think he actually motivates his team. And I think, you know, everybody's like, oh, when he joins Spurs, he's turned over a new leaf. I don't think so. I think his whole mentality is me, me, me. And he, he doesn't care about the team around him. It's just w what he looks like and how his image is portrayed. Oh, I completely agree. And in my eyes, I think he's a manager who's finished. I, I don't see him winning no trophies at Spurs. I don't see him at another big team wanting to take him on. I, I, I really do think his managerial career is almost but over. I think the only thing he could do is probably coach Portugal, maybe. That would be his last resort. What do you think? Yeah. No, I could. Yeah, no, I could see that. Well, I think the funniest thing that I've seen this morning was a photo of Ancelotti and Mourinho embracing each other after the game yesterday. And, this, and it's, the caption was brilliant. It said, five years ago, you would have thought this is the Champions League semi-final or final. And you wouldn't have thought it was a game between 10th and 11th in the Premier League. <laughs> and I think that just sums up, the, not just Mourinho, but Ancelotti as well. Like, just to follow on and the, into him and moving to Everton. Like, nothing against Everton fans. Love the team. I loved when Moyes was in charge. He'd done a great job there. But for Carlo Ancelotti to take that huge step down from like Real Madrid and all those high teams, and then looking at him and Mourinho, I think it just shows their character that they're not up to the standard of, let's say, Pep, Jurgen Klopp, even managers like that. And then even to an extent, Oli Gunnar as well. He, he looks great. Um, 
and he's bringing United up to a new a new level. Yeah, let's talk about that for a minute then. What, what do you think of um, the threat of United maybe possibly next season, depending on some of the players that they're surrounded by at the moment that they could be getting in transfers like Sancho? Um, what, what do you think this could mean for Man United next season? Could they be con- uh, title contenders? No, I don't think so. I, I think next season is going to continue to build. I think you look at Mason Greenwood, for example, fantastic player, still very young, still has a lot to learn about the game. But you look at players like him, you look at players like Marcus Rashford, and then even Sancho possibly coming in. Um, I think he bought Bruno Fernandes too late. He should have bought him last summer and waited till the, till the January transfer window, which I th- thought was very, very silly. Like, look at the impact now. I know you can say oh, hindsight is great, hindsight's twenty twenty. But even looking at him at Lisbon, he was he was outstanding. And I just thought it was a silly move not buying him last summer. He's had I, I call I call him the kiss of life for Man United. He's had the kiss of life for them this season. And <laughs> um, brought them to a new four. Brought Pogba back to his best. Like looking at Pogba now, he looks ten times the player he was at the start of the season. And um, the Manu Matic, I've never seen him play so well. Even for Chelsea, he's just looked outstanding. Um, I think United's biggest problem right now is defence. Harry Maguire, £80 million, in my opinion, not worth it. He got nutmegged by Junior Stanislas there against Burnley, and David De Gea got beaten at his near post. He's been beaten at his near post, or silly goals conceded from him for the last couple of games. So I think that's a big, big concern area for Oli. I think he needs somebody beside Maguire, maybe. I, I was looking at the possibility of Kaladu Koulibaly. Um, I know the, his, his name has been tossed about with a lot of Premier League clubs, but he needs somebody like that beside him. And then I think he needs a new left full back in, uh, in there. I don't think Luke Shaw is up to, up to the standard of a Man United player. I think he's a, a mid-table player. But that, that, that's just my opinion, you know. And Yeah. Uh, yeah, that, that's, that's me. <laughs> Well, um, there is the thing trending, isn't there, Harry? Meg Guire, because, you know. <laughs> I've, not heard that one. I've not heard that one yet. I must admit, I've not heard that one. Good one, yeah. What did yeah, you think of Man United at the moment then, mate, Sam? I mean, I know being a Liverpool fan, like we were talking about this before we come on um, the show, that you're, you know, you're, not, you're not biased, you know what I mean, at all. Like, you like to give it fair. No, no. I mean, like, it's good, referring to what David said, I, I don't think they'll challenge for the next year. I see... The Man United job, I see it as similar to what Klopp's done at Liverpool. Um, I don't think it'd take four or five years to get to the standard of Liverpool. I think with United with having the spending power that they, they do have, Klopp didn't have that at the start. So I do see United progressing. Um, I don't see them challenging for the title. Um, but again, like, like we were talking about earlier, you know, just establishing themselves back in the top four regular Champions League football and then attracting the big, more bigger players. Um, there have been talks about Grealish shining. Um, I'm not too sure where you stand on that. I, I think that'd be a good signing uh, myself, especially with Matt aging. Uh, not Matter, um, Matic aging. I think that'd be a good signing. <laughs> well, yeah, well, yeah, both, well, both of them exactly. You know, you, you're going to need replacements, and not just replacements. You're going to need strong replacements to replace that talent that you're losing. Um, so I, I do see him coming in and potentially filling that hole. Um, I don't know what your take is on it, but that's what that's what I see. Well, yeah, like we were yeah saying, no. I definitely would like to see Man United at least next season being comfortable in Champions League instead of scrapping yeah. everywhere, you know. And it's um, it's definitely progress as well. And, and Mason Greenwood, my goodness me. Yeah, I mean, his two finishes against Bournemouth were just poor. The way he took he, the two goals, David, what, what do you think? <clears throat> yeah, I just I have to say that the kid's a phenomenon. He's going to be... In my opinion, I think give it four or five years, he'll be one of the top players in the English Premier League. I, I, I don't see anything else happening. Like, the defenders don't know how to deal with him. He's right-footed, he's left-footed, he drops a shoulder. You know, he, he's not a one-trick pony. Like, I think Rashford can be at times as a one-trick pony, like push the ball past you and run past you. Martial's the same, a little trick here. Greenwood has the whole package. I just, uh, I see him being a phenomenon. And I just, I, I don't see anybody being able to stop him. Um, no. And in regards to Grealish as well, I, I'm not sure Grealish would be the right signing for United. To be fair, I, I would rather see James Madison come in from Leicester, which was another one that was talked about. Yeah, I think yeah. Madison looks a better player. And I think under Ollie's mentorship, I think he could be a better signing for United. That's just my opinion. I, I, no, no, absolutely. I, yeah. 
with Grealish, I just I, I see him maybe being one of those players with what Alex Ferguson would have said is bigger than the club. His, his image could be bigger than the club and he could be another David Beckham where, you know, after two, three, maybe five years, he gets pushed out to Real Madrid or somewhere like that, you know, for a big money fee because he's coming from Man United. Whereas with James Madison, I think he could be a better fit for Ollie's new ethos. Yeah. You know, um, and I, I just think he, he has the ability to, to fit into that team with Bruno, with Pogba, and I think he could learn off them and be another very, very good, solid midfielder in there. Um, and then obviously, you have Scott McCominay in there as well, who I think, again, has a lot of growing to do as a player, and I think will, will gradually take that mantle up from Matic. Yeah. Um, and I don't see Fred lasting there for a long time either. I think he's another one he'll be out the door as soon as uh, as soon as Ali gets the uh, mm. replacement in. No, I was gonna say with you two being um United fans, do you see Ollie taking you to the title? Do you think he's the man to make you challenge for the title? Yes. That's David. <laughs> yeah, no, I am gonna I'm gonna answer that. I'm gonna say yes. Um me personally, I'm not actually a Manchester United fan. Oh, okay. Every everybody else in my family is a United fan and you know, uh, my girlfriend, her father, they're all avid, avid Man United fans. So that's why I have such a good view of how it looks. MUTV lives on the telly in my house. So, <laughs> yeah, it, it's kind of crazy. But, um, yeah, no, I think Oli is the man to do it. I know a lot of people kind of criticise him and stuff. But when he's been given the free reign to do what he needs to do, I think he makes the right decisions at the right time. Um, Bruno Fernandez is a perfect example. I think Ed Woodward needs to... Take, take a step back. I think that's that's the the right move for United at this stage. Bring in a director of football. I don't know who that would be yet, but for me, I think yeah, Ollie is the man to get you to the title. Like Liverpool, you look at Liverpool. A lot of people talk Klopp in the first season. Oh, he might not be great. You know, Liverpool aren't really doing much at the minute. You gave him five years. He's handed you a Champions League, a Super Cup, uh, uh, the Intertoto Cup or whatever it is, and then the Premier League on top of that. So. You give a manager time. With, with Jose, they gave him time and nothing happened. They gave him three years and nothing happened. But Oli, he's only there a year and a half. You know, give him a bit of time. Give him the four years. Get the youngsters through. Like, even you have the likes of Brandon Williams coming through. Garner. You have these really, really good players about to break through into the team. And then you also have these big money signings around them. I think United can challenge for the title maybe three, four years down the line. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, you know what, I completely agree with you on that. And I <clears throat> I do think you're right about it being similar to the Klopp way, you know, the fact you've got to give him time. Ferguson needed time, do you know what I mean? He was almost going to get the sack, you know what I mean? And then the FA Cup win. So, yeah, yeah you've, got to let him, you've got to let him do it. I mean, Mourinho is the sort of type of manager that will win it for you in the first or second season. And like you said, after three years, he just really didn't do much. You've got to see Europa League and the Carling Cup, but... Nothing after that. It wasn't a progression. It was a decline. So I agree completely. I think four or five years tops to at least win a Premier League. And I think that's a fair enough wait, seeing as Liverpool waited 30 years. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> You're going to tell us, Sam, um, though, a little bit about Liverpool, seeing as we just ended with Liverpool there. No, yeah, yeah. I mean, a lot of, a lot of people are talking about strength in the squad. And it's an area that I actually completely agree with. Because you take the front three, for example, if... Mane, Usala, or Firmino get out injured. And we've already seen Origi isn't up to the standard of title teams. He's got three goals all season and he's played a fair bit of games as well. Um, so you're looking at that bench and you're thinking for a team that needs to regularly challenge for the title, there, there isn't a lot of options. Um, so I, I, I do believe it's an area where Liverpool need to strengthen. I mean, you've got the Thiago Silva, uh, you've got the Thiago saga. That's, I mean, that looks like it's going to be dragging on. Um, but again, that's another area of midfield. We haven't got a creative midfielder. Since the days of Coutinho when he left Barcelona, we haven't got that one player who can just dictate. Like, a bit like Bruno Fernandes at United. There's not that one player who can go, OK, I'm going to take the game by its hand and just do that ball, finish that pass. Um, so it's, it's going to be interesting to see what Klopp and the team do over the summer. Um, I, 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 I don't, it's going to be interesting, really. It really is. Are you, um, does it disappoint you maybe that you missed out on Werner and that Chelsea nabbed him and the fact that the, the speculation was that he was going to join Klopp and become a Liverpool player? And now oh, he's 100%. 100%. I would have, I would have took him at a snap in my hands. He's a proven goal scorer. 
Some people say he's done it in the German league, but I mean, he's, he's regularly scored 15, 20 goals for the last two or three seasons, which says enough about a striker. And a lot of people say, well, would he come and sit on the bench? He wouldn't sit on the bench, in my opinion. You can play the front three currently now with Werner, because what you do is you play Werner in the middle and you play um, Salah and Mane on the side, and you play Firmino just as in the number 10 role, and then you play the two holding midfielders. That's where I could have seen him fit in. But it, it, again, it's, it's the board not willing to pay too much. Um, which has been Liverpool's problem when it comes to certain signings. Yeah, well, what do you make of um, that, David? And uh, probably you don't hear a lot about Liverpool in your household, and <laughs> it, but if, do you have any thoughts on, on their success in the last like three or four years? Like you said, it sort of give the manager time and etc. What do you what do you make of their team? <clears throat> yeah, like as Sam said, a hundred percent, I agree. Um, their their lacking area is a creative midfielder right now. I said it all season, and I said I'll say it again now. They need one centre half to go in beside Virgil. They're sorted in their full back positions. They're sorted a goalkeeper. They're sorted with one centre back. I think they need somebody else to come in beside Virgil. I, I do rate Joe Gomez. I think he could be a great a great talent. I think he needs a, still a little bit of, bit of time, and I think maybe signing a centre back for a year. Maybe someone who's getting on a little bit, but is a proven, proven good centre half, and um, kind of similar to the Johnny Evans to Leicester deal, which has looked phenomenal for Leicester. Um, I think Henderson and Fabinho could be a good sitting two in the midfield. Hundred um, percent. Fabinho is excellent. Fabinho, I think, is excellent. I think he, he's been a revelation and the mo- one of the most underrated players at Liverpool. Hundred percent. I could not agree um, more, David. Yeah, and Henderson as well has had probably the best season I've seen him play in eight years. Um, and then you just need somebody who's going to sit behind. And I think Firmino, Firmino is the man to do it. And I think Liverpool need to buy a striker. And they 100%. also need to buy a backup winger. Minamino, to me, I don't think was a great buy at the minute. He could prove me wrong next season. They need to, for me, I think they need to get rid of Origi. He's living off the, the highlights of that Champions League goal. Oh, um, he is so bad he is. He is he's so bad he is. Time. He's going for the um, um, Issei look, isn't he, with the blonde hair, especially playing for Liverpool. Oh. <laughs> I don't yeah. know whether he's trying to disguise himself so he doesn't get sold. I don't know what he's doing, but I mean... Oh. <laughs> Celebration, isn't he? He's just gone mad. He's like, sod it. I'll just dye my hair yeah. blonde, which, um, you know, woohoo! Oh, I, think, <laughs> I, think, I think he looked at old Liverpool players like El Hadji Juff and... Uh, Gibral Cisse and went, I'll, go, I'll have that hair, haircut. I think that'll suit me. <laughs> <laughs> it must have been a bet. He must have like bets with someone, something to get a haircut like that. Because that's a 90s look, all right? No, it's, all, it's awful. <laughs> it is awful. It's sort of like everyone doing the blonde thing when Eminem come out, you know. It, just, it, it was just back in the day. No one would even dare do that. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Well, everybody watched the games tonight. Um, obviously, we, it was free to to Chelsea versus Crystal Palace, which was very close right at the end, and a few cracking goals as well. What was the end result, Sam, of the Norwich and Watford? Well, as I left, I, I missed the last five, ten minutes joining you, but when I left, it was currently 2-1 to uh, Watford. Um, Norwich actually started the game really well. They, they looked to hit uh, Watford on the break, and they'd done it numerous times, even before their goal. And I think for the goal, I think it was Hernandez who broke down the left-hand side and slitted it into that... Um, I can't think of his name, Brown Brain or whatever, uh, Gwendia. And he, he, he Gwendia, did a face yeah. shot and the, the defender slid, so he turned it back inside and just put it in the left hand side of the net. And then Watford equalised through, I think it was Craig Dawson through the header from Cabaselli free kick. Um, and then, well, I don't know whether you guys have seen it, but the Danny Welbeck overhead. Oh, great finish. Great finish. That's good for Danny Welbeck because obviously he's been so injury prone, isn't he, since since his sort of mid-career at Arsenal, um, I feel really sorry for him. It's, uh, it's nice to hear that he's scoring overhead kicks, you know. Um, that's amazing. Uh, shame he didn't work out at Man United, though, isn't it, eh, David? Yeah, no, he, he, he looked the talent at the time. I think uh, maybe he was mismanaged after Ferguson left and then obviously moved to Arsenal. Again, I don't think the injuries done him any favours. But like, I want to use another example, like Danny Ings when he left Liverpool. The two guys look like they're actually, they've had the breath of life put back into them in the mid-table team. So I'm, re- I, I'm really happy for the two of them. Danny Ings is exceptional. I mean... Can I, can I ask you two a question? Yeah, go for it. 
Danny Ings, if the Euros would have been played this year, would he have got a call-up? Oh, it's because it's, it's of Corona and what happened as well. It's difficult, isn't it? Um, uh, I don't know. That's a difficult. What do you think, David? I can't answer that right away. I need to think. <laughs> okay, so you're looking at Rashford would have been injured at the time. You're looking at Kane would have been injured at the time. So your only real option there would have been Vardy, um, who I, th- I think deserved his place in the team. He was... He's had a great season. I think he's currently still standing on top for Golden Boo at the minute. Um, so yes. I think you need a backup in there. And I, I, I'd i say Ings would have been the best of uh, mm. of, of that bunch to, to come in and maybe take that take that role, yeah. So Ings could have got a call-up. I'm not going to say he definitely would have. I don't know. I'm not Gareth Southgate. Nah, well, nah, in my opinion, nah, I, I, I would have called him up. You know, without the injuries and without the plague that he's had, you know, and he's had a good run of game time now with Southampton. I think he's looked ten times the player. I think he looked like the player that Liverpool wanted to have when they signed him initially. So 100%. yeah, I, yeah, I'd have, I'd have given him, I'd have given him that show. Would you um yeah. talk about another player that probably could have been uh, called up? Grealish. Would would you have put him in the team or at least on the squad? Yeah, I, I think I would have taken him. For me, I would have taken him. Um, I don't think he would have been a starter, not ahead of the likes of Henderson and stuff like that, who had, as I said already, the best season so far. Um, you've got Henderson there. You've got, um, I, I think Mason Mount looks a player, looks a really good player. Um, so, yeah, I'd have brought Grealish, I'd have brought Madison as well, obviously, and it would have been a, a toss-up between the two who I'd have played. Um, obviously, both of them are getting a bit of game. Well, I, I know Madison was getting a bit of game time in the internationals. I'd have brought the two of them and I'd have made them compete against each other and you would have seen the best out of the two of them, I think. So we got the massive derby game, North London derby game this weekend. Um, what do you make of Arsenal versus Spurs? Just as you, on your thoughts of the game and the fact that stats go out the window, don't they, when it comes to derby games? What, what do yeah. you? Think this? I mean, you say you say stats got the winner, but it's going to be di- obviously with it being behind closed doors. You know, they're not going to have that northern North London derby atmosphere, so it's going to take a bit of an edge off it. And and if I'm being totally honest, at the moment, I only really see it going one way. I only see Arsenal getting a result against against a poor, poor Spurs team. I really do. I think I think Spurs are lacking in so many areas. I think the defense isn't the best. I think the midfield isn't strong, and I think again, you can look, probably. The attacking options, okay, quite strong. You've got Kane and Son and Lucas Moura, who I quite like. But I, I do see Arsenal getting a result quite quite easy, actually. I've got, a lot, I've got to admit. What do you make of that, David? Yeah, I'm, I mean, being a United fan as well, it's hard to talk about Arsenal because all my, my family are <laughs> Arsenal supporters. So I always get it in the neck like when they beat us or whatever. But yeah, what do you make of Arsenal? Obviously, having a bad start. Um, not doing very well this this season, and Arteta coming in from Man City, and it looks kind of like he's trying to put something in place, and it looks like they're actually going somewhere. Just as my opinion, what do you make of it? I think again, I agree with Sam there on that one. I think I only see the result going one way. Um, that young lad Saka, who's playing on the wing, he's another phenomenal youngster. I think. Arteta giving the youngsters a, a chance. He, he needs time, like Ali, like Klopp had. Um, the youngsters are going to be Arsenal's savior in the next few years. Um, that, as I said, that lad Saka, Martinelli, they all look very good. And then when you're integrating them into a team with the likes of Aubameyang and Granite Jacket and players like that, I, I only see it going one way. And I think this for me is more so the battle of the managers and not the battle of the teams. I think similar style. Sim- similar as Sam said, Spurs have a leaky defense, but Arsenal are just as leaky, um, and hmm. can can see goals when they want to as well. So I can think of one think player is... in mind for the leakiness of Arsenal. Um, the uh, side trope. <laughs> yeah, I think you could be right there. Yeah, Never. and to be fair, Mustafi has had some howlers in his day as well. So you know, you, you've. Trying to rotate the centre backs to find somebody who isn't going to leak a goal is going to be a difficult one for uh, for Arteta in this game. But for me, I think I see Arsenal edging it. I just see it coming down to managerial tactics, and Jose is mismanaging his team a lot. I think um, 
his only real player this season has been Son. Kane has been plagued with injuries. Um, Deli Ali has been the most inconsistent player all season. And Lucas Moura, I, I don't think he's been given enough game time for us to, to really make a good judgment on him. I really wanted to see Ndombele this season. I thought he was going to be a, a magnificent player after all of what happened last season. And I think Los Celso has actually looked better than him. So, you know, that, that just says it all. Um, but I, I, for me, I think I'm gonna. If I had to predict, I'm gonna go for a two 0 Arsenal. Brilliant. What about what about you, Sam? Just to finish it off, then what what do you predict to the match result? <clears throat> well, I would have I would I would have gone also two 0 but I can't I can't say the same colour really. So I'll, I'll probably have to go two one. Two one. I'm gonna but say Arsenal. I'm gonna say oof, I'm gonna say like something weird like a frill. <laughs> I, know, I don't know why I'm saying that right now, but I just don't know. I think I'm expecting Arsenal to win, but I just don't know. Like, if Arsenal... Or leaky defences. Uh, yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, exactly. Three all would be probably suited, wouldn't it, actually? Yeah. They'd probably both take a point as well, wouldn't they, do you think, guys? Yeah, definitely. Uh, yeah, 100%. I'd say both I think managers top... need, it, need a point at this stage. Yeah. Well, thank you both for joining us. Um, do you want to shout out your Twitters and all your socials? Yeah, no worries. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at Football Sam, and you can also follow me on YouTube at Football Sam. Uh, I'd just like to say thank you for having me, Matt. It's been a pleasure, and nice me talking to you as well, David. Thanks, Sam. Uh, thanks, Matt. Yeah, no, again, thanks for having me on. Um, you can find me on Twitter and Instagram and YouTube, all at the name DJB, uh, spelled out, so D-E-E-J-A-Y, and then B-E-E. Uh, it's just my initials. I thought it sounded really cool at the time. Yes, <laughs> it, it like it. Fancy, fancy. <laughs> well, thank you guys so much. That's really cool. Love um, doing these sorts of things and getting many people on with like different opinions and stuff. It's always good. I don't like that fan channels that only like keep like a small congregation. Do you know what I mean? It's sort of like let us in. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> real fans on. Let's have a talk. Um, go check us out to Football United TV. Subscribe, share, like. Do whatever you can to help us out. And guys, hopefully we'll have you back on soon. Absolutely. It's been a pleasure. Definitely. Thanks for having us, Matt. Cheers, guys. See, See you later, guys.